All right, everyone, welcome uh, to the ranch. We've got a very special guest. We were just uh, we were just talking about it. Rudy Narain. He promised to bring me no rain this weekend. Um, very special guest for us. Uh, Rudy is coming to us from NAS Nationwide Appraisal Services. A lot of our clients, and just in general, a big topic as we start becoming more social is real estate values. Um, you know, where are they going? Is this a good time to buy? How are appraisals being done? All these little things, uh, you know, are, are really interesting topics. And Rudy is probably going to be one of the best people to to help at least shed a little bit of clarity and insight on his world and what he's seeing. And that's what Rudy. Anyways, thanks, thanks, thanks so much for 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 being on here. Yeah, thanks, Hugo, and thanks to the Vine Group for having me today. Always a pleasure to speak to your network, and uh, feels like we've been inside forever since uh, the middle of March, so things are getting better. I'm happy to be here. I can't wait to see you in person, the entire Vine Group in person, but thanks for everybody for tuning in today to at least listen to us. Slowly getting back into the group would be very nice, but again, thanks for, for, for being on here. I mean, right off the bat, I mean, how has your world changed uh, from a business perspective, as a company, like what, what, what's, what's happening in your world? You know, what happened in the middle of March? You know, what kind of communication were you getting when this all started? Yeah, what we had was absolute craziness and chaos. That's what happened, Hugo, in the middle of <laughs> March. It was, everyone was going nuts. And, uh, you know, re the real reason why people are going crazy is because when the state of emergencies got declared, and I promise I'm not going to bore everybody who's watching this, but you know that the, one of the first things they did was said that, you know, only uh, non-essential non workers were not able to go out into the workplace. And everyone was wondering, were appraisers considered essential? because you guys and gals had so many deals in the pipeline that still needed an appraisal done in order to close that deal. And how are you gonna get that, those requirements to your lending partners if an appraiser couldn't go out? But the good news was is that we quickly and literally within a week, Nationwide Appraisal Services worked with the two appraisal associations, AIC and Scenaria, to quickly get the approval of all of the different provincial federal governments to give the thumbs up and say appraisers are considered essential workers because they fit into the supply chain category that supplies essential services to lending institutions. So they could still go out to do the actual inspections, but actually I should, I should pause there. They weren't able to physically go out. They could still do the actual appraisal, but they had to complete what's called a modified appraisal. In March, nobody knew what that was. Now everybody knows what it is today. In its essential form is, the appraiser is going to use virtual uh, virtual tools, you know, whether that be Skype or whatever, to do a virtual tour of the property with the client, as well as have the client supply the pictures. So we were still able to get all of the appraisers to conduct that properly, get all of the requirements over to the lenders, and literally there were no hiccups, literally within a week. So, you know, kudos to yourselves, people at the Vine Group, the uh, network there, our lending partners that we all work with, our insurers, and obviously all of the appraisers in our network. We're just so um, just so proud of everybody, how they all work together during this time. So that was the first change, Hugo, that really happened um, in yeah. the marketplace. Now we've, we've pretty much caught up now, you know, so almost the end of June, all that is now... Um, you know, uh, second nature for everybody. Everybody uh, is all caught up with that process. Now, uh, you, you may not know the answer to this, but, you know, is there any sort of indication, I guess it could be up to the government and their, their, their team, but as to when regular appraisals would resume, is there any sort of regular timeline that you're expecting that to yeah, happen, maybe? You know what, we've seen, as we know, the provinces across Canada open up, uh, you know, and BC was one of the first provinces to truly open up and even further inside BC, like the city of Kelowna was like really the first one to open up um, with like things like restaurants and hair salons getting back to business. And so we are starting to see appraisers come back in the western side of the country and slowly move across to the eastern part of Canada, where they are now asking and calling the homeowners are you comfortable with me coming into the property? And a lot of times they are, right? So the exterior of the property is being conducted as it regularly would. And now parts of the provinces uh, in certain cities, they're going into the interior. Here where we reside, you and I reside, uh, Hugo in Ontario, not so much. Everything is still pretty much a uh, status quo. That being said, the appraisers are still are, are starting to go out to do the exterior portion, 
but not the interior portion. But, you know, if okay. I had a crystal ball, I don't, but if I did, you know, I would say that, you know, within uh, the next couple of weeks here, as we head into July, all of that's going to change. My personal take on it is, you know, if you can line up to go into a grocery store safely and go into now the malls in Ontario as of this weekend safely, then it should be safe enough for, you know, some appraisers in certain areas to go into properties and social distance and complete that properly. So I think with the right, you know, you know, uh, mask, gloves, the whole deal. I mean, I imagine that could be accommodated, you know, and slowly uh, returning to, to that to that world. Uh, now, you know, someone, I'm, I'm not an appraisal, I see tons of appraisal reports quite often, but uh, do you find that the reporting is going to be more conservative and critical because they, in theory, haven't really seen the property? And, in, in, you know, sometimes clients will say to me, well, you know, I don't want them to go into my basement because I'm missing a toilet or something is wrong with it. Can I maybe send them some old photos. You know, I feel like there's an opportunity for people to take advantage of this situation. Is that something you guys are finding or how do you deal with that possibility, you know, with not being in the property? Yeah, and that's why the virtual tour was so essential in this process is that the client needs to connect with the appraiser using, okay. let's say um, I have an Apple phone, so I'll just use FaceTime as an example. They have to make sure that they walk through the entire property. The appraiser has to see every single room then have the client supply those pictures. So the appraiser is confident enough to say, right, I actually right. saw it. The pictures that they are supplying to me are legitimate, current, up-to-date pictures that they can put onto okay. their reports. Now, they are putting on the reports that um, there is a little bit of a caveat, for lack of a better term, on the report, um, where the appraiser is mentioning that they did not have the physical ability to go inside of the actual property. So, yeah. um, you know, in, in, in your world, and again, I, you're not in my world, I'm not in your world, but I have seen or heard that some lenders are kind of restricting LTVs a little bit because of the, yeah. the situation today. They've kind of lowered them to kind of risk and safeguard a little bit. So um, in a deal by deal, case by case, lender by lender situation. So they are taking that yeah. approach to the lender side as well. Yeah. Um, as far find, as yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry go ahead. Uh, conservative wise to answer the you know part of that question as well is you know Hugo we were so fortunate in Canada last year in 2019 to have such an amazingly strong real estate market like literally right across the country was very strong western part of Canada the sales prices did not rise like Vancouver was down about four percent in the sales price so what I mean by that is overall sales prices for everything condos townhouses fully detached they were down about four percent and we know that that western market kind was struggling a little bit in 2019 but the remainder of the country from literally the middle of the country all the way out to the um, east coast was absolutely fantastic like Toronto was up about four percent some areas in Ontario were extremely doing well like Hamilton Ottawa etc yeah. the reason why I'm mentioning that Hugo is because that continued into the beginning of 2020 January, yeah, February, and March was absolutely fantastic. And we saw rebounds in that Western market as well. Like Vancouver's market finally took off. Um, yeah. It was actually, January was one of the best uh, um, uh, months of any city in Canada was Vancouver. Um, and, and to get even further into that, like the Abbotsford Mission area was absolutely just phenomenal. So because there was so strong um, sales at the end of 2019 and 2020, the appraisers had enough information and comparable sales to hold the values during the week months of March, April, and now June. So as we know, you know, the appraisers have to use about 90 days worth of comparables. So they still yeah. have enough to hold the values for now. So we have not seen any dips in conservative values, uh, valuations that are coming out. We haven't seen anything like that um, yet. And we're hoping now that things are coming back in June. And as we know, you know, the um, sales listings, like if you look at MLS as an example, Hugo, uh, they start to come back up uh, last month in May. So in April, we all know they were down about 67% sales listings. In May, it was about 56%. And in June, it's pre pre uh, projected to be less than that. So more and more listings are coming back on the market. So I think we've weathered the storm here. Again, I don't have a crystal ball, but I think we're going to be good for valuations holding. Yeah, that's a good point. And obviously, I, I see a lot a smaller percentage of files than you would. And I would say internally, a lot of the new purchases and refinances, the values that we're getting are, are pretty reasonable. Like we're not seeing a situation where the client thinks it's 
the client always clients always think their house is worth significantly more. That and it's always like you know I installed some marble countertops and I my gra- my landscape is a little better than my neighbor. It's always these little tiny things. And um, generally the values are pretty reasonable. That we're not seeing these huge drop offs. I haven't seen it at least in the GTA, and that's definitely very reassuring for a lot of people who are thinking maybe it's not a good time to buy. Maybe the the market's going to drop. Maybe I should wait for a deal. Uh, you know, I'm just not seeing that. I think there's really good confidence right now, personally. Yeah, and you know, with the low interest rates, I know if you go, you'll probably see as low as 1.99, maybe lower than that right now. Yeah, like to me, 100%. it's a great opportunity. Like I don't mind sharing my own personal uh, situation. I was yeah. telling you just before this call, I just moved into a brand new construction home in Whitby, Ontario. I got the keys three weeks ago, and. Uh, I took advantage of a, a great interest rate, but what I got, um, it's lower than what I got. And that was just three yeah. weeks ago that I closed. So, you know, I think there's there's lots of opportunity for people to get back into the market right now. I agree. I think now historically, this is probably the lowest rates we've ever seen. And I don't know if I want to say, you know, that we'll ever see, but low rates are here to stay for sure. And I always tell clients, look, it's impossible to time the market. My only advice is, you know, history has shown us that over a 15 to 30 year time frame, real estate values, specifically in stronger markets, have always gone up. So there's always going to be short term drops. My personal residence, if I'm sharing my personal story as well, two years ago, I bought it at the top of the market in April of 2017. And I closed it in September later that year. And I immediately lost 100 grand like with before it closed. And obviously, I wasn't excited about it. But, uh, you know, since then, it's gone up in value and it, it's fine. So I think if you've got that timeline of maybe three to five years and, and you're purchasing a home to live in with your family, I think, you know, the valuation and the timing of that shouldn't be a factor in, 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 in purchasing real estate. It should just be, do I like this place? Can I afford it? Do we all want to live here? Let's do it. And over time, you know, you can, you'll, you'll see that appreciation. That's just my experience. Um, what, what do you see um, on the lender side? How do you see them adapting to, to, to COVID? Like, you know, you had mentioned a couple of things with the way you're reporting them, having a Skype call, but are there requests that the lenders are imposing on you with COVID world, with how yeah. you're reporting? You know what? Uh, we have been pressing our lending partners to continuously utilize other forms of the appraisals outside of the full appraisal. You know, the full appraisals when you go in, the, the regular appraisal everybody sees. But as you know, there's drive-by appraisals, there's desktops, and there's AVMs, which is, stands for Automated Valuation Model. And, you know, there's many solutions out there by many companies that provide that instantaneous estimate of that value. And uh, it's become stronger and stronger, the AVMs, because there's more and more providers that can uh, amalgamate data and come up with stronger AVMs. So we have always been saying to uh, our lending partners, you know, there's situations and we have a NAS solution that's utilized by one of the big banks uh, in the broker uh, world um, where, and I'm sure you know which one, if you submit a deal to them, sometimes it'll come back and say, you don't need a full appraisal. You can use an AVM. Um, that's yeah. a, a NAS solution that we're very proud of. So what we've seen by lenders is an, an, an adapt, a more adoption, Hugo, of uh, drive-bys, desktops, and AVMs in certain areas, in certain postal codes, within certain property types, et cetera. And that's a great thing because what it does is obviously speed up the process and makes it ultimately most cost efficiently for your client at the end of the day. So oh, yeah. that, I, that, I love that when we get those little AVM approvals because for a client who's sort of crossing their fingers and saying okay we have the approval i've got two days to meet my conditions i really hope the value is good and there's a lot of concerns of, with the values and covid and having that instant approval that you got the service you guys offer saying you know what you're in a very marketable area your value has been supported and here's your report and the bank saying this is good let's move forward it's so much more comforting for someone who you know a lot of the clients who are buying sometimes their first home and are just concerned about Will I have to? Will I be able to buy this? And will I have to maybe put more money down? So it's, I think it's it's great, and would love to see more of that if, as the system to get more sophisticated. Um, after I'll see, where do you see uh, appraisal services kind of going forward? Do you see more digitalization? Do you see more automation? Like, what do you? What's your opinion on on that whole business model? Yeah, I think it's uh, going to continue this way, Hugo. You know, it's um it's odd, and I, I don't want to come across uh, in the oh. wrong manner here that um, when I say this, but COVID-19 has actually created opportunities for many, many companies in uh, around the world. Work from home as an example, you know, I'll use that as an example. More and more companies are now looking at 
you know, our, our employees are more productive um, outside of being confined to the house, but they're more happy because they have a little bit more time uh, in less commuting, etc. The world has changed that way. And you're starting to see more companies say, I think we're going to continue this pattern of work from home. I think it's the same thing with the appraisal process here is that by doing things and looking at uh, different methods like the drive-by, AVM, et cetera, I think there's an opportunity for us to now say and, and more lenders to adopt that. And we've actually heard that from a couple of our lending partners to say, I think we're going to start to look at utilizing more AVMs in our methodology and our lending practices. If it's low LTV, and again, it's yeah. in a, a cookie cutter neighborhood, in a postal code area that we're very comfortable, Mississauga, Ontario, you know, in certain areas, every house looks the same. Uh, outside of uh, tremendous upgrades within the property, they're all going to be basically the same. And again, if it's low LTV, why not just use an AVM? So I think that's yeah. the biggest thing that we're going to see some changes with here. And and that's a okay. great thing. Again, you know, at the, ultimately at the end of the day, and a, a little bit of a selfish plug here for Naz, we're here to help the uh, home owner as well. At the end of the day, you know, as much as we love you and the Vine Group. We love seeing and helping the Canadian homeowner achieve their dreams. And if we can make this faster and more efficient for them, then that's what we're we're all in this business and industry and passionate about, right? So Yeah, no, no. We we love we love you guys. We love what you guys have developed and how you've made our job so much easier. And you know what? Appraisals aren't always perfect, as you know. Sometimes people um, you know, come back and say, Oh, that value's wrong. And and you guys have always been very uh, accommodating where, you know what? Uh you know, uh, based on the, the information we have, this is the value we, we feel is strongly, you know, supported. But sometimes something's missed or a recent ha a tr a transaction happens that we bring to, to light. And you guys have always been very reasonable when when possible to 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 allow to, to help our clients. So, I mean, aside from all the other technology and the great service you guys have, we're big fans of NAS and it's big big uh, help for our business and uh, and getting things done very efficiently. So we're, we're, I'm grateful you're, you're on the call. Uh, a lot of the stuff are questions I get on almost a daily basis now, and I'm happy to, to have you uh, shed some light. Any any last words? I know we're kind of, you know, at, at least officially in Toronto, we're kind of in this next stage where now we can go to restaurants and things like that. Are you have any plans for this weekend, anything you're trying to do to take advantage of this new, you well, know, open... I Openness that we have. I, I, I myself am not, but I know my wife's going to be spending my, our hour, <laughs> I should say my, our hard earned money this weekend at the malls because they've opened up. And obviously, uh, with moving into the new house, there's so many little things, uh, knickknacks and all that kind of stuff that she wants to buy. So she'll yeah. be doing that. I'll be uh, still unpacking boxes here. But you know what? To end, Hugo. Yeah, the last time I saw the Vine Group team was last year at the rec room. We had a fantastic uh, get together. I was looking forward to that again this year and then COVID hit. So who knows, maybe by the uh, some part of the, the third quarter here, we'll all be able to still do that. I can promise that uh, NAS will be another great sponsor at that event or wherever it's going to be held. And uh, I'm just looking forward to it. And uh, thanks again for all of the continued support. You have a wonderful team and uh, thanks again. Thanks for the kind of words, Reed. So, so with the new home, you're probably planning a barbecue for us at some point in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> well, it's funny enough, my wife bought me a brand new barbecue because we moved from a condo. She bought it for Father's Day, so it's supposed to arrive tomorrow. Uh, so maybe congrats. that's what I'll be doing this weekend is putting it together. <laughs> Uh, barbecues are fun, and I think the weather will likely hold up, so it'll be a perfect perfect weekend. But again, Rudy, thanks so much for, for being on the call, and I look forward to seeing you in person. Take care for now, my friends. Thanks. Thank you.